Thank you for taking a coffee break with Praise Center. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee Break with Praise Center. Thank you for joining me this morning. Hopefully you've had, I hope and pray that you've had a wonderful day so far. And I hope it's not too wet where you are. And the weather is okay where you are so that you've had a great morning. We are starting a new series on today, so I hope you're prepared. I hope you're ready uh, to go into this new series with me on this morning. Grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your journals, grab your Bibles. Uh, we're going to be in the, go through this discussion briefly on today, and um, I want you to make sure you have everything. Get comfortable. This is a comfortable series. Get comfortable uh, wherever you are, if you can, if you can. Um, and so that we can go through this in this discussion on this morning. Let's open up in a word of prayer and then we'll get right into our discussion. Father God, we thank you. We adore you and we magnify you for just being God and God alone. We thank you for the opportunity that has been given to us to come together to fellowship and to come together and dig into your word. God, help us to apply this word, these truths for our lives. Help us to grow in you. Help us to seek you. Help us to turn to you in every area of our lives. God, we thank you and we adore you for all that you are doing in our lives. We thank you and adore you for what is yet to come in our lives. God, I ask a special blessing on those that is joining me this morning. God, prosper their way. Bless them in a special way. Give them the desires of their heart, oh God. Just cover them. Keep them. Protect them. From everything oh God draw them closer to you God we praise you and we adore you we honor you and we bless you in Jesus name amen all right ladies and gentlemen this morning today we are beginning a new series so we have a new book so make sure that you um, find your way back to the website and, and go under the coffee break or the small group se um, section and go into the last there's another book up there it's really colorful like this god is in the laundry room that's the book we're doing um right now that we're discussing and i want everyone to be able to get this particular book and you can use this too as a journal because it has lots of questions and space in there for you to be able to write so i encourage you to have this not only in your library but to um use it use it it's it's a it's a good um bible uh groups uh, a bible study workbook too so this morning we're starting our series on and i should have named it cleanliness cleanliness is next to godliness and that's a lot of words cleanliness is next to godliness um this series and so yeah, I know that that saying is is an old uh, non-biblical fact, but many of us grew up on that. I know I did strong on that statement. Um, it was ingrained in us, and it was ingrained in me that, and almost ingrained so much so that it almost probably made some of us almost germaphobes because. Everything we did, that was the thing our grandma or our mom would say, cleanliness is next to godliness. And that would make us, it was said so that we can straighten up and get, get things together. They come into your room and your room is a mess. That was the first thing they would say before they would say, get this room cleaned up. You know, everything that came out, everything was supposed to be right and in order. The house was dirty. You know, it was just, it was a statement, but it was a statement, you know, to clean our rooms or to clean the house or even to clean our bodies if we were out doing something and you wanted to go somewhere and that was the first thing that they would say didn't have a scripture to back it up but it sounded good and it's something that we thought was part of the bible because it had godliness in there you know it was next to god we wanted to be next to god we wanted to be close to god so we had to be clean that was the idea when we weren't right, it wasn't just a physical thing. I don't know about you, but my grandmother, 
always she and use that too for when your spirit was when your walk wasn't right when your spirit wasn't right with God when your relationship with God was a bit filthy yeah she would often remind you cleanliness is next to godliness and that was all they would have to say it was nothing else that needed to go with that because once it was said we wanted to please God that was our goal our motive our desire to please God so then when that statement was made it was to straighten us up I mean get yourself together that means you know so you're doing something that God is not pleased with it's dirty God don't want to have anything to do with dirt he's not filthy right <laughs> so we wanted to get everything cleaned up why one of the reasons why and all often time um, we, we would be told you know God is watching you you know God, God sees everything you do. He knows everything you are involved in. He's looking at you. He's making sure that you're, you're right. Right was clean, right? That's how we associated that. Cleanliness, God is clean. So right is clean. And so we needed to be cleaned up. So he's watching you. He's making sure that you're not clean. I mean, that you are clean. Okay, then they would throw out, he's coming back for church without a spot or a wrinkle and it would make us think, are we the church? But that was just how it all tied in together, right? Yeah. We wanted to be clean. We wanted to, be, to make sure that we were doing the right thing by God. We wanted, when God saw us, we wanted to be right. That statement, I don't know if y'all, that, but that's how I interpret that statement all of my life. Since I was a real small little thing. Um, <laughs> and I still use it on my kids today. I don't know if they get it quite like I got it, but that's how I received it. So today, today, this is where we're going with this series. Okay. I want, I want us to begin to hold on to that statement. Okay. Hold on to that statement. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Okay. And if you never thought about it in detail, like I just explained it, begin to think about it that way, okay? God is watching you, and he does not want you dirty, and he doesn't want you, you, you know, he, he wants to make sure that everything you do is right. Right is clean. We're going to associate all these things with God, okay? I want you, and we're going to start real quick with this. I want you to write down chap, uh, Matthew Matthew chapter 7, verses 18 through 23. We're going to go just get right into this. It's not a lot to today, uh, but I want us to look at a couple of scriptures because I want us to begin to um, position ourselves for this series, okay? And I know some of the men are like, I don't want a laundry room series or whatever, so I'm going to tune out. Just stick with us. You've been sticking with us all this time. Don't leave us now. Um, I'm sure that there's something you can pull out of this that you can share with someone else, okay? So write down Matthew chapter 7, verses 18 through 23. We're going to pull on this scripture and we're going to pull the scripture out frequently throughout this series. Okay. This is not what it's based on, but this is one scripture that we want to keep putting in our minds. Okay. I'm going to read the New Living Translation. I'm not going to jump back and forth. New Living Translation of this. It says, a good tree can't produce bad fruit. A bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every time, every, I'm sorry, so every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Verse 21, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter in. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. 
get away from me you who broke who break God's laws we we know that scripture probably and and he will profess unto them I knew you I never knew you depart from me okay ye that work iniquity as we go through this series and we hold on to this particular scripture as we go through it uh, we continuously look at it I want you to think about we're going to be getting into the fruit that we are producing okay um, can you, how are you identified by your actions I think pastor spoke about this I'm not sure it was in Bible study or one of his messages um, about how you are identified what is your fruit say about you can, can, what can when people look at you when they see your actions when they see how you respond we've been talking about this stuff respond to certain situations do they see good fruit or do they see bad fruit do they you know do they see the God in you or do they see something else in you okay we're going to be looking at that the fruit that we produce how, how, do, how, do, how are we identified how do people identify us by our actions? And then the other part of this is I want us to, because we're going to be talking about a routine thing that is done, throwing this back in our laundry. <laughs> when we do things, are we doing things out of routine? Okay? Or, so I'll ask this question. Let me ask it this way. Is God able to get the glory out of your life as he's watching you? Is God able to get the glory out of your life as he's watching you? Everything, I want us to think about that everything, everything that we do has a purpose and a significance um, in our lives, okay? Everything that we are involved in, everything that is going on in our lives that we are doing in our lives there's a purpose and a significance for it and so if there's a purpose and a significance for it I want to go to this other side is God able to get the glory out of it as he's watching you or better yet do we even do we even care if God is pleased with what we're doing and I mean everything Oftentimes, I often uh, I say that we don't, when we talk about God or we think about our Christian walk, we only think about the things we're doing in ministry. Okay? We only think about, uh, you know, whether we're going to church, whether we're, re, you know, making sure we're doing our daily devotion. And that's about to the extent of our spiritual laundry spiritual things that we are doing okay but we we tend to and our, our heart will continue as long as we're doing coffee break our off our focus is to understand that God belongs in every aspect of our lives that means everything that we are involved in God should be involved in yeah everything and I mean it everything the things you do out in front of people in public and the things you do behind closed doors everything God should be involved in but sometimes what we do is we involve God in the public things the things that are going to be seen and we don't involve God in the private things think about your laundry <laughs> yeah think about your laundry it's private how, how much yeah Laundry is private. There are some things in your laundry basket that only you and, and if you have a significant your husband or wife only need to see because there are some things that, you know, people come and you're sick and you're sick and shut in and you go in and you want to do people's laundry and the first thing kind of, you kind of ask, are there any personal things that you don't want me to handle? You tend, to, they tend to tend to their own personal things if they can. If not, then, you know, I you know, I really, I try to keep my, see, I'm going to say this, I try to keep my husband supplied with undergarments, I'll put it that way, 
in case something, this is what my mama told me, in case something was to happen to me, <laughs> that I was not able to get two kids undergarments, that someone else would not have to come into my house and wash his undergarments. That's not what needed to happen. There are personal things in your life that, so there are things in our life that we tend to not, you know, lend to the spirit because they're personal, they're private, behind closed doors. We only lend God the spirit, you know, lend these things that are public that will be seen, okay? So this question, is God able to get the glory out of your life as he is watching you? Or better yet, do you even care if God is pleased? I'll give an example. We're going to get into some more words. But I want us to, to think. I'm, I'm trying to get you positioned for this series, okay? Um, I feel, you know, God has signed and called me to be a wife and a mother. Yes, I said that. Okay, honestly, not everyone has that assignment. Not everyone is given that assignment. So, it, it, I, I have to talk for me. I'm not going to talk for anyone else. I have to seek him for everything to fulfill the assignment. That includes in my cooking. And there was a time that, you know, I'm not the greatest of cooks. So, I have to sit and I have to pray over some recipes. Lord. Please make this taste good and edible so it can be, so we'll be nourished on tonight. There's a time where I used to fade, and my husband could attest that I would fade all of his clothes. So a certain laundry detergent, I had to stop using them. I had, I had to learn how to, Lord, help me to stop fading this man's clothes. <laughs> so he had to stop going out and buying stuff. When you, it is, it's, it, it, yes, the, the, doing the laundry, doing the cooking, there are routines, there are things that have to be done, but when God has assigned you or called you to do something, and I, I know I'm trying, tying something, um, into this, but when God is, has called you to do something, it is not just routine, because when I get, when we get stuck in routine, we no longer need to think on what God wants at that time. We no longer even think about, is God pleased out of it? Does he, is he satisfied with what we're doing? Can he be glorified with all that we're doing? I want you to think about that. The things that you are doing in your everyday life that you consider routine. Think about that for a second. Can God, is God being pleased? Is he... Can he get the glory out of the things that you're doing? No, you might not be spitting out scriptures every time your mouth opens. Or no, you might not be, um, you know, praying for someone or praying on something. I'm not saying that. But can God say, okay, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I'm pleased with what they're doing. Their mind is right. Their heart is right um, in what they're giving and what they're doing. Um, there is no malice, there is no envy, there is no greed, there is nothing uh, a part of them. And these are things that we tend to overlook or that we tend to just go through our everyday cares of life and we just don't put God in. I want us to, to just think about that for a second. Okay? I have down here, as I was thinking about that, you know, all the things that I, I like I say, it's for me. I have to seek God in everything that I do, or else it will come out a disaster. Okay, if I try to put um, a table look together for somebody, if I don't stop and pray and ask God, God, give me the vision for this, put it together for me, then it's, for me, it comes out all chaotic, it comes out all wrong. So yeah, you can call me so heavenly minded, I'm no earthly good, whatever, I don't care. But I feel that if God has assigned me or has allowed me to do something, he has given me a gift to do something, then I'm going to turn to him and ask him to help me with it. I'm going to seek God. That's what I want you to write down in your journals. Big, bold, highlight, underline, whatever. Seek God. This is what we're going to be doing in this series. It's understanding that we need to seek God in everything that we do. 
I don't care how good you are at it. No, I don't care how natural it is for you. Seek God first. Seek Him and allow Him to give you the right tools for that time. Because, you know, the tools you might have might not be for that moment that He needs it done. Seek God. Make sure you're doing exactly what He wants you to do. How He wants you to do it. And then that way you don't have to find yourself redoing stuff all over again. So be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Yes, yeah, seek God in everything. Go to God first. Let's tell somebody, hold on, wait a minute. Let me go to God because uh, I need his direction on this. I, I On this recipe. I need him in this um, whatever. Putting whatever your hands set forth to do. Seek God for it. Let's look at. Sorry. Let's look at John. John chapter 5. Chapter 5 verses 39 and 40. This kind of goes along with Matthew chapter 7 verse 18 to 23. Let's write down John chapter 5 verses 39 through 40. It says, you, you search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life. But the scriptures point to me. Yet you refuse to come to me to receive this life. Okay? Don't get caught up in clean and unclean. Doing the things, making sure the assignment is done. And then forgetting that. Forgetting all about God. That's what I want us to focus on. Don't get so caught up in doing everything that you're doing. So get so caught up in achieving and accomplishing everything that we forget about God. We have to remember, and we're going to go through eight sessions in this, this book. God is in the laundry room. I know it's a weird kind of title, but God is in the laundry room. It's going to lead us through about... Excuse me through eight different sessions about us seeking God and putting God in everything that we do In chapter one of this um, She begins to go through She be, she steps right into um Doing some spiritual laundry. And that's what she begins talking about. So the first step that she addresses here, which we have addressed, which is kind of a continuation from our last series, um, Broken Crayon, Still Color. We were talking about brokenness and, and our brokenness to wholeness. She began with reminding us or telling us that the first step to doing our spiritual laundry is to get rid of sin okay confessing your sin acknowledging your sin confessing your sin and getting and making sure that we are free of sin okay trying to look for She includes here how we can get into a routine of things and we overlook the sin that's in our lives. Or I don't want to say I don't want to say or because I want us to acknowledge there are certain things in our lives that things that are not of God that we still hold on to in our lives. That we think are just, I want to say trivial, that we think are just, you know, oh, they don't deserve so much looking at. They're okay. I can live. I can survive. You know, there are functional drunks in the world too, but that, that's not good, a good way to be. Greed was one of the areas that she touched upon in chapter one. 
sometimes we don't even think about that being a, a big thing in our lives. Greed. Sometimes we can get so caught up into um, things that we like, that we just want more, 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 more. We don't need it. It's not necessary. It has no purpose in our lives. But yet we continue to pursue the more, whether it be attention, whether it be money, whether it be things. That was one of the things she touched upon was greed. Because it's something that you can kind of overlook. You can sweep that into the private area of your life because no one ha can has to really see that. You can pacify or cover up the look of greed, right? But it goes into that has greed has no relationship with God. It has no no place in God's kingdom. It has no 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 place. Let me let me get to the scriptures that she um gave to us. The particular greed that she was discussing here. Um, well, no, let's just start with, go to Psalm. Psalm 139. Go to Psalm 139. And I want you to write this down. Because it's something that, um, as she started off this particular section, something that we should a prayer that we should constantly be saying to it. Also, Psalm one thirty nine, verses twenty three and twenty four. It says, "Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me." And lead me in the way everlasting. Okay. Write if you get a chance, get an opportunity. Actually, write out that those verses in your journal. If you get an opportunity to do that. So that you constantly are looking at that. What she was encouraging us is, was to get to the root of the wickedness in our lives, to get to the root of um, the problem in our lives. The, the, the thing, that one thing, and you, you have to know, you have to figure out what that thing is. Uh, no one can tell you. Yes, yeah, someone can probably see some things and say, you know, this is what it is. But if there is greed in, there, greed in your life, there is um, enviness in your life, if there is... Um, it can be worry, anxiety. These are things that we don't put out in for, we can pacify the work. I'm going to say pacify. We can cover up. We can dress up on the outside, but they're going on within us and they're causing us in there. What it's doing is keeping us from this everlasting life. And we think because we are doing, oh, but, you know, I'm really saved and I'm doing everything that God has called me to do. I'm ministering. I'm preaching the word. I'm teaching. I'm doing everything. And we think because we're doing those things that it's going to be okay. God is going to say, well done. And it, we, if we go back to Matthew, it tells us. But, you know, all this stuff you're doing, these works, they're wonderful works, but, and you're doing them in my name, but you had no relationship with me. You never, I don't know you. You never decided to come and seek me, come to me and desire me. Don't be that one, okay, that will be turned away or God just says, I, you know, go away from me. Just turn from me. Depart. Because your works that you've done, yeah, they're beautiful, they're wonderful, and I'm glad that you did them in my name, but 
you I don't have a relationship with you. So break away from me. You did not do really what I wanted you to do. Don't be that one. Think about I me. Mean, I want us to think about that. What are we doing with our lives? What are we doing in our everyday cares? Whether it be your laundry, whether it be your cleaning up and dusting, whether it be your cooking, whether it be your working on your jobs, on your computers, um, finances, uh, what are you doing? What? Not just in ministry. And I want us to always say, I want us to get beyond, go deeper than what we're doing in front of people. Okay. What are you doing in private? And that's why we picked up this laundry room book because your laundry is done in private. Something that you do not do in public. Your laundry room is, is, is in a secluded place. Whether it be in the basement or if it's on an a, a open level, it's, it's in a separate room. There's a door, right? Covering it. Why? Because your laundry is personal. It's, it's done behind closed doors. There are things you just don't want people to see. What's going on inside your spirit, man, too, that you just don't want people to see that you're covering up? Can God be pleased with it? Is God pleased with it? Or is there some things you need to address, you need to search out, you need to confess, you need to get right with God? This particular chapter, and I want you to go through this chapter, so that's why I really encourage you to get this book. Because this book is really detailed. And I'm not trying to sell the book, but I just want you to encourage you to get the book. It's, it gives you, it takes you through, because we can't go through the first 20 pages is chapter one. Okay. But it gives you detailed ideas so that you're thinking, so that you know, I want you to know why you need to seek God in every area of your life and that God is willing to be a part of every area of your life. Don't think that just because, you know, I only need to call on God or I only need to seek God when, you know, it's something really devastating or something beyond my control. Honestly, you don't control anything. And so we need to seek God in everything. Um, especially if you want it done right or, or, or to become, or be effectively done. Maybe I should say that, be effectively done, okay? There are many scriptures in here that I want you to go through. And I want you to see that, you know, the, really the enemy wants to keep these things inside of you, hidden in you, and telling you that it's okay to, to obtain those. It's okay. Just keep doing, do the other good stuff that you're doing. <laughs> yeah, that other stuff. But just hold on to this. Hold, hold on to this. Because, and he doesn't say, well, he doesn't say because, right? He doesn't say because I want to keep you here with me. I want you to live with me in eternity. I don't want you to go over there. No. <laughs> he doesn't say that. Oh, but God will see. Yeah, he'll see the things that you're doing, but he doesn't say, but he'll tell you. I didn't have a relationship with you. Since you had a relationship with the devil, you go and live with the devil. I don't want him to say that to me. Allow this particular series, and I want to say this before we close out. Allow this series to really minister to your heart. Okay? Really search your heart. Really search inside of yourself. and to make sure and see um, that everything that I'm doing, God can be pleased with. And he will say, I mean, he will actually say, come, be with me. Enter in. <laughs> Okay, into this glory. Okay, we all want to hear that well done in the end. We all want to hear that um, you have been faithful, and, and, and I thank you for that. Our thank you is this everlasting life. And I, so I want us, and I don't want anyone to miss this mark, I want us to begin to think about are we seeking God in every area of our life? Are we allowing God to be um, in the focal point, the first point? of everything that we do, everything that he has assigned us to do. I don't care how um, easy it may be for us to do it, how routine it may be. Is God in it? Does he have a hand in it? Has he ordered it? Has he uh, structured it? 
this is where we're going with this series and I hope and, um, and I encourage you to tell someone else about this series so that they can join in with us and understand that God needs to be a part of everything in their life okay this is our brief introduction and our brief um, look at chapter one as we go into chapter two we'll go more in detail about cleaning up or doing our spiritual laundry okay I want us to your homework is to take a minute to to look at your life and to make sure and just look at some some things that we need to clean up all of us can clean up something in our life even if it's just I mean if you if, even if it's just gossiping I say just but gossiping can be a big thing to some and tri trivial to others there are things that we can clean up in our lives and all of us have things that we can clean up in our lives we're always working on this relationship we talked about that last it was the, our relationship is always a work in progress and so this is what we're going to be doing for the next eight weeks <laughs> in this series okay continue to join us continue to spread the news about coffee break I thank you for joining me today um, make sure that you call me and let me know text me let me know something how these coffee breaks are are going or what they're doing for you there are many well all of them we have just found out that we've done a hundred coffee breaks so don't think that you can't go back and look at them all you know you might not have time to look at all 100 but take a minute those of you that are online or those of you that can get a chance to get to a computer look at go back into the different series they're all there for you um, the previous books that we've done go back and be encouraged and be enriched and empowered um, in this word in the word of God okay share the coffee breaks with another brother or sister I said a brother first another sister or and a brother you never know what that person might be going through and how these can encourage them also if you get an opportunity and we would love for you to go to the website and make a contribution to Praise Center for a coffee break we want to continue to do the assignment that God has given us and we thank you and 